Good morning, and, and thank you to everyone joining us. Uh, I am honored to have the privilege of introducing uh, four really exceptional members of our General Assembly uh, who I hope can help lead us in a productive and, and bipartisan conversation about priorities and prospects for the upcoming legislative session and the future of our state. Uh, these are folks who are, are, are really engaged, who I know personally, uh, and, and, and who I can uh, say are, are really public servants at heart uh, and, and, and working every day to advance issues that, that matter to the lives of Georgians. Uh, and, and, and so uh, with that, I will just introduce our panelists in alphabetical order uh, and then get started. And so uh, first, uh, we have Minority Leader uh, James Beverly of the 143rd District uh, out of Macon, uh, who leads the House Democratic Caucus. Uh, we have Senator Dean Burke, the newly appointed chairman of the Senate Insurance and Labor Committee, uh, representing the 11th District uh, in South Georgia from Bainbridge. Uh, Senator Chuck Huffstetler, uh, the finance chairman uh, in the state Senate, representing the 52nd District uh, from Rome. And then Senator Jen Jordan uh, from the 6th District, uh, chairwoman of the Special Judiciary Committee, uh, representing Atlanta. Thank you all so much for joining our panel uh, and for making time this morning. So before we started, uh, I just went through a relatively brief overview of where the state's fiscal position is. Uh, we know that, and, and, and we have uh, several folks on this panel who are medical professionals who are engaged every day in the COVID-19 crisis. We know how the pandemic is affecting folks all across our state. And yet $1.2 billion in budget cuts remain, real challenges uh, to our healthcare infrastructure, our education system, uh, and, and many of the issues that y'all have been engaged in for a long time. And so we'll just start alphabetically uh, with, with Leader Beverly. Uh, and, and, and I'd like you all to, to first uh, address the state budget and, and generally, uh, what are your policy priorities for the 2021 legislative session? What do you hope that, that we can accomplish this year? So first and foremost, thanks uh, Danny for putting this on and the GBPI for doing this. Uh, it's always good to see Senator Huffstetler, Burke and Jordan. Uh, they, those are smart colleagues of mine and I'm always looking forward to seeing them and working with them in the General Assembly. Um, as far as the Georgia House Democratic Caucus is concerned and my priorities are, uh, number one is we have to deal with education. As you know, uh, there's been a massive cut to education uh, with the money that is in the Revenue Reserve Fund uh, there are reasons why we should look at that because many students right now as a result of COVID through no fault of their own are experiencing a gap year. And that gap year has come with many challenges. And one of the, the more telling challenges is this digital divide has become a real, real problem. And it's, and it's uh, COVID has unearthed that. In rural areas, you have students who if the wind blows, uh, you know, the internet goes out. In urban areas, you have kids who are using their grandmother's or their mother's cell phone because they don't have a tablet or a computer. And so as we start to close the digital divide, we have to think about how do we not just claw back the money that we that's out there, but how do you deploy that money in a way specifically to deal with this digital divide, not knowing when indeed this uh, pandemic is going to come to a conclusion. So that would be my number one priority is closing the digital divide. Uh, the second one would be healthcare, obviously. Uh, where there's a lot of money on the table with um, with what we're not doing by expanding Medicaid. That needs to be an honest conversation. We need to put politics aside. We have 600,000 Georgians right now uh, who now have pre-existing conditions because they have COVID. Again, through no fault of their own, we need to seriously think about that. And lastly, liberties or civil liberties. Uh, obviously, last year we passed the hate crimes bill. Uh, this year we're going to go for you know no knock warrants and those kind of things but that's sort of tertiary to the two big ones that we'll focus on and that is uh, education and healthcare. Uh, thank you leader beverly uh, senator burke uh thank you and glad to be on the call with everyone can you hear me okay danny yes yes we can. okay thank you uh, i'm sitting in a parking lot in South Georgia trying to get home so I can get my uh, COVID test. And so I apologize for not being on camera, but it would not be a pretty picture. So uh, it's raining hard, and uh, but it's nice to be out of Atlanta, I'll be honest. Uh, uh, 
the thank you all for having this panel uh, getting right right to the to the budget uh, I was uh, glad to see the governor was able to to restore uh, a fair amount of money back into the budget uh, in the amended budget from from uh, last year and some additional increases uh, for the uh, next fiscal year. Uh, in particular, the areas I was happy to see increased funding was in, in uh, uh, DBHDD uh, funding uh, with several new uh, uh, dollars towards uh, crisis centers. Uh, uh, there was uh, in human services some increases in the uh, uh, funding for uh, elder abuse, which I was very, very happy to see, which that's one of the, the, the issues I'm uh, very passionate about. Uh, and then in the uh, uh, area of uh, 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 I'm, I'm blocking on the third one. It'll come to me in a minute. But uh, uh, again, I think the governor, uh, just like uh, Representative Beverly mentioned, uh, focused his increases on uh, uh, education uh, and, and in health care. Uh, so I, I think there is certainly bipartisan support uh, for that issue uh, and, and look forward to, to working with the, with the other uh, party on those issues. Thanks. Senator Huffstetler. Well, great to be on here again, Danny. And, um, you know, as, as finance chair, one of my jobs, uh, the, the finance committee is responsible for raising revenue for the state of Georgia. And then Blake Taylor's job is to spend it. So we've all got our roles. Um, but um, we obviously need to look at continuing to in, increase the revenue. The uh, marketplace facilitator that we passed last year on the fourth day in a bipartisan manner, I know your group had, had called for it for, for many years, um, is bringing in about six, $700 million of revenue. And fortunately, we, we weren't that smart, but our timing was good in that it started April 1st when everybody started going online. I, I, I tell people, yeah, I knew that was gonna happen. That's why I did it in reality. There's a little bit of luck there, but um, we uh, one thing we didn't do that would have brought in an equal amount would be putting the, the tobacco tax at the uh, national level. And um, so I hate the cuts. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I, I try instead of fighting over um, the pie, I try to make the pie a little bit bigger through getting revenue in that was legally owed, just like that sales tax was legally owed, but we didn't have a mechanism to do it. Obviously, um, anything we can do to get the vaccine out. And as a anesthesia provider, I've, I had my second dose uh, last week um, and anything we can do to get that out to the population, we need to push the federal government and the new administration and our state government and leaders and everyone to get that out. That's going to be important to revitalizing our economy and bringing in the revenue we need. And we also certainly need to look at our, our rural health care um, and uh, a couple of ways that I think we're going to look at to try to help some funding in that area. We, we do have, um, obviously, we've, we've restored a lot of the education cuts even to this budget that's continuing and, and next year will be looked at. I think the governor's been a little bit cautious. You know, there's, there's a lot of uncertainties there and hopefully we'll continue to show in the next couple of three months if, if the revenue is continuing to be there, if the federal government's gonna provide additional funding and hopefully restore some of these badly needed uh, uh, restoration of these cuts that, that, we are, that we badly need here. Thank you, Senator Jordan. Yeah, um, I agree with um, Chairman Huffstedler in terms of, of trying to make the pie bigger. I think we've got some real opportunities in the state with respect to um, the tobacco tax, uh, looking at some of the tax credits that the state provides right now, um, that the ROI on those return on, return on investment really is not there. Um, and you know we really need to take a hard look at them to see um, if you know, we're really getting what we thought we were gonna get when we extended them in the first place. In terms of priorities, I think the priority has to be COVID. Um, you know, I was disappointed to see that the, um, that in terms of the governor's budget, whatever increases um, there were with respect to public health were negligible. Um, I think that what we've seen is that our lack of funding of public health in the last decade and um, our continued lack of commitment to public health 
um, has really impacted our ability to deal with this pandemic. And at every turn, um, really we've been told that it comes down to money. Not getting the vaccination out timely or that rollout is money. Um, you know, I think the COVID data task force stood down in August because it ran out of money. Um, these are all things that in terms of the economy and education, in terms of whatever we're looking at in the next decade in terms of the state of Georgia, the thing that we have to deal with, that, that it has to be the number one priority, has to be COVID dealing with this pandemic and getting it under control as quickly as possible because that impacts absolutely everything else. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and I, I want to hit on things that, that all of y'all mentioned, but I, I, I think the place to start is, is where you took our conversation, Senator Jordan, and, 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 and something that all of y'all mentioned, really, which is COVID, the pandemic, and our healthcare system. And so we, we all know that we had significant challenges before this. I, I think all of y'all uh, were, were closely involved in, in legislation on healthcare, uh, working to improve different aspects of our healthcare system. We know that we have one of the highest rates of uninsured in America and Georgia still, uh, high levels of uncompensated care, a healthcare system that, that, that we've been working to modernize, but, but still uh, much work is left to be done. Uh, and, and so I wanna start with Senator Burke. Uh, you are you know, working at a rural hospital, ha are intimately involved in rural healthcare. I know it's your passion. I know it's something that you've been working on for a long time. And, and then I wanna take this to the other panelists but what, what have you seen during this pandemic? What, what have you learned from your own challenges uh, where you think that uh, th there, there may be uh, impetus uh, to, to improve on our healthcare system and, and issues that, that you're going to work to try to address? Uh, well, thank you, Danny. I've, one thing, I'm, uh, I, I'm an uh, optimist uh, by nature and, uh, and a glass half full. And I, I know we all want to... Uh, focus on on the negatives but but let me tell you about some of the positives uh uh the the frontline health care uh, workers uh and we use uh heroes uh, a little bit probably too much in, in this day and age but uh, i know the 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 people that are working in our hospital and uh, and uh, i represent eight health systems in in the the large geographic district that i'm represent and, and these people uh, have uh, uh, given, you know, frequently, uh, I hate to say their lives, but, but certainly uh, uh, there, there have been some of that too during this pandemic. And they, were, they are doing all they can. And uh, the, the state has done a remarkable job. Uh, you know, we never had a shortage of, of PPE to protect our healthcare workers. We had state patrolmen delivering supplies at, at three o'clock in the morning, driving from from the central warehouse or wherever wherever that is up up in Metro. Uh, and uh, when we needed uh, ventilators, uh, we we got two overnighted. Uh, so uh, again, there's been a, a, a the state has put a lot of effort towards uh, the infrastructure that that was needed to uh, respond to this pandemic, and I, I really want to give the governor and his uh, staff, GEMA, DCH, uh, uh, one thing that I mentioned in the budget hearings yesterday is the cooperation between agencies right now in Georgia, uh, the silos that have been broken, uh, I think, have been remarkable. Now that being said, uh, I think the, the the pandemic has certainly highlighted the fact that our rural uh, network of uh, of health systems are critically needed, and we've got to uh, increase the the resources to support those because the tertiary hospitals uh, are, are not able to to uh, provide the, the the bandwidth to to. Uh, take care of these people. Uh, we, we, our little hospital, which is 80 bad license, but because of staffing shortages, we, we're full when we're at 40. Uh, we've been on diversion many, many times in the past month because we had no place to put people. Uh, and, and if hospitals like ours disappear, uh, you know, the, the, these regional hospitals would be completely overwhelmed in short order. Uh, so I, I do think the, the pandemic has, has shown a light on that. Uh, and as Senator Jordan mentioned about public health, 
uh, the, the, the infrastructure in per, per public health is, is certainly uh, inadequate. Uh, I've been uh, t talking about that for the last eight years. Uh, and again, I think this pandemic has shown that and I hope to uh, both from a budgetary standpoint, but also from a statute standpoint, there's a lot about our Georgia's public health system that needs to be changed as far as the the, the county uh, system and, and the way the, the bureaucracy is, is set up. And we're gonna have to have an honest conversation about that. Thank, thank you, Senator. The, uh, you know, I, I think we'll, we'll come back to a, a couple of those themes, but, but I, I think those are, those are really important points. Uh, Senator Huffstetler, uh, you are working uh, similarly, you know, on, on a daily basis or, or certainly, you know, regularly uh, with patients and, and, and dealing with this crisis. Uh, what would you add and, and, and how do you think that your experience has, has sort of shaped your larger view of, of what we need to address in our healthcare system? Well, I, I finished a, a long shift yesterday. They're actually at the hospital, came back here and worked some. We'll work there this weekend. We lost our first uh, nurse this week to COVID. Um, I, very sad to say, um, though, you know, we certainly know many, many individuals that we have. And um, we have got to continue to, to work on our behaviors. The hospitals can't do it by themselves. I, I'm disappointed in those that have made a mockery of science um, that, you know, people have lost uh, family members, and it, I think it hurts them even more when they deal with those that that want to deny it. We've got to to work on on our behaviors. We've got to work on obviously the vaccines we talked about, and as as Dean talked about, and he's certainly the expert on the the rural hospitals. But we've got to look at the inequities out there. We've got some hospitals that that really don't have to pay anything in, but that make enormous revenues. And we've got others that have an enormous amount of indigent care that need some help. And, and we've got to save our hospitals in rural Georgia. And um, I've got a, a couple of things we're gonna be looking at to do that this year in. Thank you, Senator Jordan. Yeah, so in terms of the glass um, half full, I think we really got an opportunity here with the new Biden administration Look, we know that the waiver that uh, Governor Kemp um, got from the Trump administration, it's already gonna be litigated. Um, we don't even know the cost associated with the administration of it. Really, this is an opportunity to do a reset button, um, expand Medicaid throughout the state so that these tertiary hospitals as um, uh, Senator Burke was talking about um, can be funded um, and can get the money they need so that they can staff their hospitals so um, people can be covered so that then they can be healthy. Um, it's one of those things where this seems like a no brainer to me. Um, it's cheaper and we cover more people. And, you know, it, from a political perspective, if, if the governor wants to point to the new administration as the reason for having to do it, that's fine with me. Um, but this really is an opportunity to do the right thing and make sure that we can cover as many people as possible. And at the same time, bring in billions of dollars uh, to these local economies outside of the Metro Atlanta area um, that are really hurting right now. Thank you, Senator. And, and, and now Leader Beverly, you, you've been very outspoken about, about these issues, about, about Medicaid, about COVID, COVID protections for workers in Georgia. Uh, what, what would you like to add? Yeah, I think I think it covered it. And then Senator Jordan is exactly correct. You know, we have to expand Medicaid it, and it's not it shouldn't even be a political football anymore. I mean, it's time to do it. And I certainly agree that, look, you have people in the gap. The one thing that we look, I'm, I'm an optometrist, I have a couple of small practices and the small business. We're losing some of our employees because people are afraid. So, you know, you got a small business component to this in healthcare that we're not addressing. You have employees who are terrified to come in because they don't know what to do. I have doctors who are like, all right, I'll work a couple of days a week and some days I want to be off just because everybody's still very much afraid. And then you're trying to balance that with, you know, dep depleting revenues. Um, your, your, your insurance is not rightly aligned with, you know, what you're actually doing. And we have a big job in front of us. And one big thing we can do to take care of all of us is expand Medicaid now. And that should not be an option. So we're going to push very hard for that. And I know that we have some uh, some colleagues on the other side of the aisle to do it and certainly across the chamber to do it. And we should just have that honest conversation. But at the end of the day, who does what when? 
we should do it now and we should expand Medicaid. Thank you, Lou Beverly. And I'd like to start with uh, Chairman Huffstetler on, on, on the next question. Uh, Senator Jordan brought up this issue and, and you have been outspoken uh, in, in talking about our state's need to develop a standard system to evaluate the return on investment from our tax credits, both proposed and existing. Uh, we have billions of dollars on the books right now uh, of credits that, that aren't regularly evaluated. You've co-sponsored many bills on this subject. You've led some of them to even unanimous passage in the Senate. Uh, talk about this issues, your hopes for this session, uh, what y'all are gonna be working on on the issue of transparency in our tax code and, and, and trying to roll back uh, some of these less efficient measures uh, so that we can put some more money uh, in, in the state's treasury. Well, I think, Danny, as you pointed out in the past, we've got about nine and a half billion in uh, various tax credits on sales and income tax out there. Some of them I think are worthy. I think many of them are not. But when you collect 14 billion in income tax and you're giving away nine and a half billion dollars, um, you might have a chance to have more revenue and perhaps have everybody have a, a better tax rate at the same time. So we've got to work on that. We had uh, Senator Alberts had passed a bill two years ago that the governor vetoed to evaluate five of these tax credits each year. It's not you know, comprehensive, but it, it was certainly a start because he wanted to be somebody independent. We got an agreement with him this year, this last year to do it, and maybe perhaps because of the session and priorities, we didn't get it done through the House. The Senate certainly passed again, and we've introduced it again this year. Now, what I'm also gonna be proposing this year is a, uh, two-year study on our overall uh, tax structure. You know, the economy is changing. We've got uh, people that download software that used to buy them at Walmart. Uh, the sales tax has taken a big hit and has put pressure on income taxes. And uh, Senator Jordan and I and a couple other senators worked on this last year. And I want to have a, a longer period to study this. And, and the last time this was done was in 2010. In 2010 and 11, this was studied. Interestingly, at that time, the marketplace facilitator was one of that group's recommendations. We finally got that done. Uh, increasing the tobacco tax was also one of their recommendations. So some of these issues have been around for a while. And I think we need to take a really big picture look at that over the next year or two and, and look at long term what we need in the state of Georgia and to get a hold of these tax credits that just don't make sense, but have been there because, um, you know, there's been a lot of political pressure to keep them there. Senator Jordan, uh, Chairman Huffstetler mentioned, mentioned you as, as somebody, and I know that you've been working on these issues and, and trying to forge bipartisan path forward. Uh, can you talk about what, what you see on this issue and, and uh, sort of you know, at, react to, to what Chairman Huffstetler said? Yeah, I mean, he's exactly right. Um, look, at the end of the day, we need we need to kind of clean our house. We need to make sure that whatever we're doing makes sense. Um, I think that uh, Chairman Huff Studler um, and I are on the same page. I'm not against tax credits. I'm not against um, offering incentives um, for businesses um, to come here or to stay here or whatever. Um, but it has to make sense at the end of the day. And um, I think what's happened is a credit will be extended or something will be passed and, and nobody wants to touch it then. And so then it just continues and then we continue to add to it. And all that's done is, is really eat significantly into our revenue, um, which then of course, when we need money that gets offloaded onto individuals because we're talking about income tax. So it's one of those things, we gotta look at equities in the tax system. Um, everybody needs to be paying their fair share. And um, if a tax credit makes sense, then it makes sense. But if it doesn't, um, then you know, we, need, we need to change it um, because obviously we are facing some pretty significant um, problems and issues um, in this state that are, are gonna require a significant amount of um, investment going forward. And you can only do that if you have the money to actually invest. Absolutely. Uh, Leader Beverly, that the, these are issues that, that you've been very engaged in, as well as uh, promoting things like the earned income tax credit, uh, other uh, ways that, that Georgians could 
uh, see boosts in their incomes and, and, and ways that we can make the tax code more fair. What do you see as, as some of the other issues on the table here? Yeah, as far as tax, I mean, one of the things we can do fairly quickly is to have a refundable earned income tax credit. Uh, that and move it to 100%. You know, it's at 50% now what the federal is. We move it to 100%. You realize each individual will realize some gains right away. Um, the, the other piece that I think that, that we're not necessarily talking about that I agree to is that we need to audit these tax credits, right? And just see what, what they're actually yielding. I think that uh, Senator Jordan and Senator Hostel are exactly right to look at these things. Well, what is the impact? And what are they actually doing from a, from the a standpoint of a return on our investment? And if they're good for Georgians, then great. But we cannot continue to ask Georgians, individual Georgians, to sacrifice. Both at the school level, we're losing what six hundred you know million dollars. Healthcare, we're not expanding, and corporations are getting away with a significant amount of corporate welfare because we haven't looked overhauled the tax credit uh, code. So we got to audit that and see how we rightly align our priorities so that we actually, actually make sure that we're all pulling together to make sure that Georgia is a viable state to not only be the number one state to do business, but also for the individual to thrive as well. And so I'm open to, you know, what our, our colleagues across the chamber are doing and looking forward for that discussion to happen over in the house in a very robust way this year. And um, yeah, let's, let's get it done because Georgia's are, are hurting right now and we can do a lot of stuff together, I'm sure. Absolutely. And so now, we're, we're about five minutes away from, from concluding. So I just want to end with one last question that, that I'll give everyone an opportunity to answer, uh, starting with Senator Burke. Uh, and, and so, you know, I'll combine a couple of things here uh, and, and, and I'd like each of you sort of to, to, to give us your thoughts and, and, and the path forward. Uh, through the last year with, with the COVID pandemic, uh, with, with these other budget cuts, we have a, a lot of inequities have been revealed in Georgia. A lot of inequities across race, across uh, income, across region, uh, issues that our state ha has been working to address, uh, but, but for too long uh, have, have we, we've had insufficient progress on. And, 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 and issues where uh, we, we've just seen the pandemic, uh, the, the budget shortfall, and, and the other challenges exacerbate our, our state's position uh, and, and, and leave a lot of these challenges uh, at, at the forefront. And, and, and I know that, that a lot of you see, see those issues. We, we've talked about many of them, uh, but what, what do you think if, as you sit here today, Monday will, will be day number five legislative session. There are a lot of prospects of things that, that could change the posture. There could be additional federal and state aid uh, that there could be the decision to, to use some of the state's reserves, uh, a, a, as several of you talked about. The tobacco tax is something uh, that came very close to passing out of the Senate last year. money to the state's treasury. Uh, what, as we conclude, uh, what, what do you think would be some of the top things that we could do to address those disparities across race, across geography, income, uh, that, that so many Georgians are feeling right now, uh, starting with Senator Burke. Uh, thank you, Danny. Uh, you know, that's a, uh, probably not the best question to end on, I'll say, because that, that's another hour conversation, uh, not a, a, a one minute or, but, uh, you know, I think the first step is just having honest conversations across party lines and, and uh, in our own caucuses to, to decide what our priorities are. You know, we are a, uh, uh, a legislature that's made up of, of people that are uh, working. We're not a full-time legislature and, and therefore our bandwidths are, are, are limited. Uh, and unfortunately, frequently, we spend too much time on the crisis of the moment and not thinking long-term and big picture. And, uh, you know, to the degree that, that we can set aside some time and, and actually see if we can reach some, some uh, bipartisan uh, consensus on uh, uh, revenue uh, and how to spend that revenue. Uh, you know, uh, government's frustrating. I mean, I, I get it. it, it it's uh, as somebody that's been a physician and, and used to, you know, ordering something uh, uh, today and, and it being done, you know, within five minutes or within 24 hours, depending on whether I call it stat or not, uh, dealing with the government is, is very frustrating. But that being said, I don't know a better way. Uh, you know, with, without consensus, 
uh, then we have chaos. And so I, I do think that, uh, um, you know, smart people that are dedicated and, and I agree that this group is certainly uh, uh, those people. We just have to get in the room and, and try to work through it. I don't have a magic bullet. I wish I did. Absolutely. Uh, Leader Beverly. Yeah, thanks, Danny. You know, Wayne Gretzky famously said, what made you what made you great? He said, I'd skate to where the puck was going, not where it is. And we know where the puck's going. This COVID is going to end. Uh, we're going to get the vaccine, folks. I mean, uh, President Biden says he's going to try to get 100 million uh, vaccines out in 100 days. And so we know this is going to end. And what we need to think about is what do we do with the uh, rainy day uh, fund? Uh, that is going to come back. We are already at, you know, close to 11%. We got to, we can get to 15. If you take a billion dollars out of that right now, half a billion dollars, we can close these gaps right away. Recognizing that we're coming in, as some of our friends say, coming in hot, right? We're coming in hot and the fact that our economy is going to bounce back. And so we need to think about how transportation looks. Obviously, as we're looking at the digital divide, healthcare, expanded Medicaid, those things we should do now. But the very first thing we should do is repeal all these cuts replace them and restore the budget. We have to do that. And we have the wherewithal to do that. We should do that now. And so we are uh, just out of time, but I just want to go to Senator Huffstetler and then Senator Jordan, uh, just briefly to, to have y'all add, and then we will end. Well, quickly, we need to focus on uh, the COVID vaccine. Anything we can do to get that out quicker to our people. We've got to look at all our tax structure and uh, get ahead of that. We've got to level the playing field on energy care with our healthcare system and help our rural hospitals out. And we've got to get a, uh, as we continue to work on our data, we've got to get better data and, and more uh, cohesiveness among our systems. I know the Department of Labor has a completely different system than as an example than our other uh, data. And we've got to be able to have it where these are interchangeable and we can help each other out in times of crisis. So really quickly, I think what we need to do is say, what do we want this state to look like? What do we want the education system to be? What do we want the healthcare system to be? Because unfortunately what we do is um, we deal kind of in crisis mode and just go jump from that to that. And really we kind of need to just do a reset button and say, what, what do we want Georgia to be in the future? And then, then we need to figure out how to get there. Well, thank you all so much. This has been an excellent discussion. Uh, we really appreciate y'all, not only for your time today, but for your work to, to advance these ideas, these policies uh, into reality and, and your service to our state. Uh, we can't thank you enough for making time this morning uh, and, and for your leadership uh, and your public service. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, and that concludes our legislative panel. So thank you all and we will move on.